Hey guys, and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. Well, in the close of my last video on scratch building a shop cart, I threw in a bonus at the end on uh, how I make aluminum floor pans for dioramas and so forth. Well, I had a friend locally, as well as uh, Mike, made a comment in the comments section about wanting to know a little more about uh, the floor pans as far as how the real ones are made and comparison, things like that. And I thought, well, I did not cover a whole lot about that. So we're going to spend just a few minutes, make a short video on how we do it and how they're really made. So stick around. We'll have some fun. Hey guys, before we get started, I want to give a shout out and I want to share something with you. This week I got my very first shop card and I was excited about that. In fact, I'm going to have to design myself a shop card. These are kind of cool. This is from Kim's Custom Garage in Denmark and got a great channel over there. He does some awesome work. Go over and uh, check Kim's uh, channel out. Uh, show him some love. Give him a sub. Uh, but I was really excited about this and Kim. Thank you so much for the kind words and uh, I really appreciate it This is going to go somewhere uh, prominent on the workbench. I appreciate it. Okay guys. Let's get to this thing In addition to the floor pans, let's go ahead and talk about some of the inside bulkheads some of the metal That's not sheet metal for the body anything but body work um have you ever wondered why there's so many bends and different shapes uh, that's stamped or cut into the metal? Well, actually, well, let's ask this question. Does bending the metal make it more rigid? Does it make it stronger? And honestly, the answer to that is yes and no. Uh, it depends on the type of metal, of course, and the gauge of the metal, the thickness of the metal. Um, a lot of the factory floor pans, as you see here, are stamped. And a lot of the race car that I've seen in the fab shops before are stamped. Uh, you do have shops that do custom work or their own work, and they make their own stamps, or they use a bead machine or some way to, to bend the metal and, and uh, strengthen it. And to give you an idea how that works is, the if you ever look at, at like the bed of a pickup truck, and you notice the gauge of the metal doesn't really look that thick, but you notice how, even in these pictures, the factory ribs are built into it. And if you were to lay a flat piece of sheet metal, that same gauge, just across the, the chassis uh, framework and all that stuff in the bed of a pickup truck and walk on it, you would probably, when you weren't on one of the cross rails, it would sink in a little bit. But if you get out and walk in the bed of your pickup right now on the bare metal, you'll notice with those ridges, it is rigid it doesn't move and a lot of bed liners or even the lay-in bed liners are made that way too it's that little extra strength so yes in in depending again on the metal and the gauge of the metal it does stiffen it up and uh, strengthen it up and we'll look at that when we get to the model here in a few minutes too uh, but like I said the factory stock stuff is usually stamped most race cars are and and again some of the the race teams do their own thing custom cars and hot rods now that's a cool thing too because a lot of that stuff is custom uh, as you see in this door panel here this is really unique uh, and here's a look at, at one of the homemade little templates and you see it's just made out of wood and they lay that over it and then they uh, hammer that out and you get a really good look. And then there's the beading machine that gives you the lines and ridges and all that kind of stuff too. Um, I've mentioned before that one of my big things is research, research, research. I love doing research. And when it gets into some of the, let's say NHRA, you can go online and find NHRA rule books, especially some of the old ones, the NASCAR rule books and NHRA had some great drawings in them. Uh, in addition to spelling out some of the rules. Um, here's a 1972 NHRA rule book. And by the way, a lot of these you can still find online if you want to buy it. And a lot of these you can just pull it up for a particular year uh, and find it. Here's an SCCA uh, rule book from a Sports Car Club of America. Great stuff. Here's some uh, F1 looking, uh, F look, ah, excuse me, F1 rule book. Uh, all you need to know cool um but it gives you an idea of if you're really looking for accuracy this is another good way to do that 
And um, this 1977 NASCAR rule book is my very first one. And you see there that that was from the first year I had a NASCAR license. And then here's the cover for the 2021 rule book, rule book package. And a lot of these, you can get the rules right online, too. And a lot of them have some great illustrations to them. Um, another little bonus I'll throw in here. How many of you, take a look at this decal here. And tell me what you see unique about this old 60s, 70s NASCAR logo. Yeah, you see it right. Drag race division. Did you know NASCAR, in addition to NHRA and IHRA in the 60s and 70s, had a drag race division? Um, this is kind of cool. Cool little rule book here, too. But um, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Factory stuff, like I said, is stamped. A lot of the race car panels, uh, left, right, rears, and some of it is custom made as it goes along. But those bends, folds, designs are to strengthen it. Now, let's go ahead and get into some of the model stuff, and we'll take a look at um, how the model companies recreate that. The model manufacturing companies have done a really outstanding job in replicating most of the cars that I think we deal with, if not all of them. This uh, monogram NASCAR chassis, as you see, has all of the the floor pan uh, work, which we discussed about being the, the strengthening of it. The um, bulkheads back here, you see all the ridges and uh, whether it's the wheel wells, the small crush panels, uh, the ridges there that adds a little bit more strength. And as we looked at last time, um, laying that thin piece of aluminum right over that and uh, burnishing that in gives you a floor pan for a shop diorama or a fab shop anything like that as you see that that is really a nice looking piece of work and it's easy to do and before i get any further let me go ahead and give you an idea of the kind of metals that i like to use to do this and by all means if somebody has a, a better idea or a unique idea i love learning stuff all the time so don't hesitate but my three uh, main go-to metals is for transmission tunnels things like that i like to use an old coke can um, it's a little thicker than uh, the what i was using for the to make the floor pan so it's a little harder to get the indentions into it but it's great for those transmission tunnels and some of the bulkheads my big thing is i use pie pan bottoms and this is an old lasagna pan bottom and you can cut out the size you need and you can just go to it uh, and it, it takes to it very easily as we looked at last time I use both a toothpick and primarily a q-tip and once you get it on there just make sure it doesn't move hold it in, in place and just start burnishing lightly at first and then start getting a little bit uh, heavier and in those little bitty small areas like right here let's see let me take this off Hopefully you can see these little bitty four ridges here. Those just take a little extra time there. And you see how they show up. And boom. But again, this is great for laying around a shop uh, like you're getting ready to install it. And as we know, a lot of these things, even in the uh, regular floor pans for the stock vehicles, they are stamped or, or printed in some ways. Um, easy to do. Here I've got a piece of sheet metal that's already cut out as the pipe pan thing. That fits right in. I need to cut out for the transmission there, but you see how that fits right there, and that would just go over. So if you want to replicate any of that kind of stuff, you can certainly do it. Um, now, when it comes to stock vehicles, or and you can do this by the way with drag cars you can come up with your own designs on on uh, custom cars and we'll look at a couple ways to do that in just a minute but on a stock vehicle usually with the interior you have this is a 69 uh revel charger you notice the carpeting but if you were doing a nascar you would need that bare flooring and how you would do that is you would take one of these this is what i'm working on i removed the fuel cell area and all that but I've got two tools that I like to use. I call it a gouge, but it's just a, 
uh, an X-Acto blade that's blunt, just a flat blade, and this, my, my mini knife that I can get into a, a few places with. I use this to scribe a lot too, but this is really good for getting down in here, and you can see where I remove the emergency brake cables, the fuel lines, and uh, I've got a little more cleanup to do on these, but once you get all of that removed, you can take your sheet metal, lay that right over that, and again, start burnishing it down, and then all you do is take this and put it on the top. Now, when you're gluing these in, um, I use five minute epoxy, and the reason I do that is twofold. First of all, it holds it in place. Secondly, it um, gives a little extra firmness to the metal. Now, as you see in this picture of the uh, inside the trunk of my uh, Daytona, you see those ridges that are down here, which by the way, on a race car that doesn't have the carpet in the trunk, you're going to be able to see all of this work. And so what you do is you take that piece of metal, you cut it to the shape, then you uh, put it down, and I've already done it to save time. Um, and then again, as you can see, you just go over and burnish that in. And when you're done, now keep in mind too that as you see on the bottom of the car, these are raised, which means they're going to be recessed in the trunk. So what you do then is just do the recessed side down, as you see in these pictures of the, the Daytona there. And once they're primed and painted, you get that realistic look. And here's a, a shot of the real car. You see those ribs in there underneath those uh, wing supports sticking up there. So it's really easy to do. It, it's quick. And you can put those, the floor pans, uh, once you get the bottom of this done, you can just flip it right around. And uh, this is the one for the other car. But you see how it's working. It gives you that look of the bare floor if you're going for that kind of accuracy or in that one um, so it's really not hard to do now let's talk about bulkheads a minute um, the bulkheads that you would see let me grab this stock car here especially uh, drag cars NASCARs you'll oftentimes have uh, in the rule books, they have to have crush panels. They have to have no gaps. And you remember on our, our models, we have that firewall that comes straight up right here. And there's that gap between the firewall and the door. And if you're having the trunk open, you need to fill. And let me show you that real quick. You see how on our models, we have this huge gap right here. And back here going into the trunk. Well, you can't have that. And I'll show you how we can fill that in very, very quickly and very, very easily. I'll show you just how quick. <laughs> um, first thing is you need a contour gauge. These things, this one's a really old one I've had for a long time. But what you'll want to do is I've already marked here on the body where the firewall is. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to try to come in <laughs> and right to where the firewall mark is. And I'm going to push the contour gauge flush to the body line. And when I remove that, you see my shape. Now, I'll take a 3x5 card and my pencil. And I use a lot of 3x5 cards. And I'll draw... What my contour was and I'm going to cut that out with the scissors here but really that's that's the shape and surprisingly this is almost I won't say it's a hundred percent every now and then I have to make a second one but usually it's pretty spot on Okay, now let's see how we did. 
because I'm on video, probably not well, but we'll see. Now, usually it's it's spot on. And we'll take, and of course, what we're going to want to do is we'll glue this edge right here to the edge of the firewall, and it'll go right in. Look at that. Look at that. Well, I'm going to get my hand out of my own way there. I might have to get some tweezers to hold it. In fact, let's do that. All right. Boom. Uh, we have no, you see no light, no gap, no nothing right there. It fits right tight up against where the firewall will be. And like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to run just a small little bit of glue right down through here and put that on there. Now, you can do this with sheet plastic, of course. But let me tell you, when I discovered a contour gauge, man, you can do so many things with these things. And uh, I'll reset it there, and we're back to square one. But you can do um, just here. Let me lay these here a minute and spread them out. Watch this. Um, and you just, as you can see, you can do all kinds of shapes and things like that with it. Um, a very invaluable tool when you do scratch building and, and things like that as well. But what I would like, to, would like to do sometimes is I'll take aluminum, I'll lay my piece on it, I'll use a uh, Sharpie, a fine point Sharpie, I'll cut that out and then glue the bare piece of aluminum in there. Here's a shot of my Superflow car. Uh, in the front, you see the bulkheads, the way they're set in there, uh, on the right and the left side, and here's a look inside the trunk over the wheel wells that cover and fill that gap there and by the way you see those little ridges those little uh, lines that are in the bulkheads up front um, I have a really small it almost looks like a pizza cutter a little bitty thing but I'll mark the lengths and then I'll roll that across it I'm looking for it here on the workbench but I don't see it um, and another thing I do when it's really small stuff that I got to get into you might be able to see it on uh, the ridges on this one but the other end of what I use as a pointer is a, it's got just a little round edge on it. And I have used my ruler and just put that down on it. That is, if it'll cooperate. And then you mark where you want it to start and end. And then take that little end and just lightly press into it and go over it and over it about four or five times and you get those two ridges that are in there. And another thing to make things look really realistic is add some rivets. And if you ever wonder how you can get things evenly spaced, get you a set of pounce wheels. These things are cool. The first time I used them, I was like, how have I lived without these things? Um, they'll leave you some great looking rivet work and give you an idea. I'll put this right here. Let me move this up a little bit. Put this right here. Hold that down. And I'll use, this is the largest one. Well, I'll try to get on the edge here. If I'll stop moving it. And then I'm just going to slowly push down and go up. And you see what looks like rivet lines. And here's some shots of the rivet work under the hood of my Daytona and some uh, work in the trunk. And again, you can do this stuff. And by the way, these pounce wheels work great on sheet plastic too. And you have three different sizes. Now you can order these one size on uh, a lot of hobby shops carry these. I got these at my local hobby shop, uh, Mason's Hot Rod and Hobbies. And you can order these online sets of three as well. Um, or individually. Let me use the smallest one. You've got three sizes. This is the smallest one if you're doing a small project or you want the the rivets actually uh, closer together than these. You can use the small one. Let me get on the edge here of that one too. And as you see, that's a really intricate piece there but uh, gives you a very realistic uh, realistic work too 
Um, I think that's about everything for right now. Uh, I can't think of anything else I'm leaving out. Um, no, I think that's it. But guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate the questions. Uh, of course, I can't do this on every single question that's asked, but in that I didn't elaborate much on that, I'll try to do better. <laughs> but thanks again um, for watching. Hope you got something out of it. I hope it's something you'll give a try to. It's, it's really fun when you get into doing this kind of stuff. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Uh, you'll help us grow immensely, and we do appreciate it very much. So, guys, until next time, have a great one, and God bless.